Books, books, I like books. I'm going to read them all. Hi readers, Chris here. Welcome to my channel where I review fantasy Stephen King, all sorts of books. And today I'm going to be taking you on a journey of uh, what I did in August, my August vlog. August was a really busy month. I had a fantastic vacation, and then as soon as I came back, work got really busy, but I did get out and do some bargain book hunting and a little bit of Halloween shopping. Unfortunately, I did not get as much footage from my vacation as I wanted. I mean, I was not alone like ever because I was with a group of friends and we were just having so much fun and hanging out. I really didn't have much time to uh, read or to do much uh, filming, but I will share with you what I did get. So uh, I'm going to stop talking right now and jump into the vlog and I hope you enjoy. I'm gonna say that's a nice looking view. <laughs> we have our own chairs. It's so pretty. So I have absolutely no idea what day it is. Um, but I think it's day three here in Takana. And I have gotten like none of this book read so far, uh, Sins of the Night. However, what I have read, I do think it's slightly less um, corny than the last book I read in the series, so that's good. There hasn't been too much steam yet, which is bad, because the only reason I'm reading this book is for the steam. I will try to check back in in a few days to let you know how it's going, but for now, I'm going to switch the camera angle so that you can enjoy the view that I'm enjoying right now. So that is the entrance to the room right there. So when I come out of my room every morning, we have our own private plunge pool. And then as you can see, the beach is right there with all the palm trees. Cabana number five. Mama it's for number us. Engar hooked us up with his lovely cabana for all week. It's so cute. Who doesn't want to hang out in a cabana? Hmm? So it is the last day of vacation and I have done like no reading here because it's been so nice. Look at it. Look at it, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Uh, and I'd rather be in the water. So yeah, that's all for now. Now everyone's staring at me really awkwardly. <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> <laughs> See everyone when I get back. Happy reading. I'm just swiper, I'm enough. And I'm great at stealing stuff. So hey mom, check me out. I'm just Swiper. Hi readers. Coming back from vacation is hard. It's tough. Uh, 
No one has brought me my morning mimosa, and no one's asking me where I want to go to dinner tonight, so I'm not sure why I came back. But I'm here trying to get back into the routine of things. I didn't get as much reading done on vacation as I wanted to, but I did make some good progress um, on both of my buddy reads. Hope you had a great week last week. All right, I am back from vacation and doing a little uh, post-vacation laundry. And of course, even though I planned on doing this video tonight, I did not bring my ring light with me. So I don't have the lighting I normally would like, but that's okay, uh, I can deal with it. It's also super hot where I am. So whew, if you keep seeing me go like this, it's cause I'm sweating. So as you saw in my uh, minimal vacation footage, I did not get a ton of reading done on vacation. However, on my way back from Punta Cana, I did get stuck on my plane for about an hour and a half. Like after we landed, we couldn't get off the plane for an hour and a half because apparently the gate we were supposed to pull up to, there was a plane there and they couldn't find anyone to move the plane for an hour and a half. So. Thank you, Newark Airport, for that uh, lovely experience at 10 o'clock at night. But during that time, I did get a chunk of reading done on two books. Uh, one is Casile's Servant by Jacqueline Carey. I am buddy reading this one with Kirsten over at Re Reading Nymph. And it's really fun to read this book with her because, like myself, uh, we're both certified Jacqueline Carey fangirls. Both of us love the Kushiel's Dart series. So it's been really fun to read this with her because both of us know the series really well so we can talk about it really well. This one is very much reminds me of, I don't know if anyone remembers when Midnight Sun came out a few years ago and Midnight Sun is a retelling of Twilight but from Edward's point of view instead of Bella. And Cassiel's Servant is a retelling from Jocelyn, the male's point of view, instead of the main character, Phaedra, that we get in Cushiel's Dart. I really enjoyed the beginning of this book because we get to learn a lot about Jocelyn's uh, younger years. So his character is this like warrior priest guy who is like, the, he is the ultimate companion. He is raised to be this warrior. He's very strict. He's not distracted by love or pleasure or anything. So it's really fun to like see how he got to be that way. But now I'm into the point of the story where he has met Phaedra and of course, uh, you know, she's special. So they end up having this uh, really unique bond. They go through a trauma together and through that trauma, like they really find love. Now they haven't gotten to the point in the story where they're like completely in love yet, but you really get to hear his inner monologue and how she kind of slowly breaks down his barriers and starts to crack his heart open and he didn't think that he was ever going to have this experience in his life but he does and it's really beautiful and it's fun to see from his point of view now one thing kirsten mentioned this in one of her videos which i will link in the description box below but this series is very much a like political fantasy uh think like Game of Thrones, where there's all these different houses and vying for the throne and all this stuff going on behind the scenes. And Jocelyn's not really involved in all these political machinations. So if you don't already know what's going on, that could be a little bit confusing. Now, again, because I'm a huge fan, I know that stuff. But if you're someone who's not familiar with this world, you've never read it, that might be confusing for you. So I will say that up front, but I personally am really enjoying it. The other book I've made really good progress on is Sins of the Night by Sherilyn Kenyon. Now this book, I'm sad to say, I am pretty sure I left on the plane. So I had to download a digital copy because I was already almost like halfway through it. Um, I did contact my airline to see if maybe they could find it. 
um, but I don't really have high hopes, so, and it's fine. It was an old paperback. I probably got it for a dollar at a, um, at a flea market, so not a big loss. Um, it's just kind of funny. So anyway, this is very much a supernatural romance. It's a very, you know, sexy, steamy book. And again, if you've been following me for a while, I don't typically read a lot of these books, but I do when I go on vacation because there's just something about being in the hot sun on the beach. I want to read a, a hot book. So anyway, the last book that I read in this series, the Dark Hunter series, was back in the spring when I went to Costa Rica. And that book I found really, really, really silly and pretty corny. It made me laugh out loud. This book is much more serious. It's much less silly and it's much less corny. However, I'm about halfway through and like no one has had sex yet. And I feel like the whole point of these books is to like get that. And the fact that I haven't gotten that yet, I think is kind of annoying. So I don't know, maybe when it does happen, it'll be spectacular, but I'm kind of like, that's the only reason I'm reading this, like, like, let's get to it. But the actual story in this book, because there is an actual plot, um, is very interesting, and it adds a whole lot of world building to this world. I think this is the sixth book, and it's this really complex world of gods and goddesses and demon hunters and all these different types of demons and like it's honestly it's like really it's got a really massive mythology like really massive so it's very interesting that this book took something that's already pretty expansive and just is expanding it even more so part of me in my head is like I don't even know if I want all of that because I feel like it's so much to remember at this point. Um, but I am enjoying the characters, so we'll see what happens. One book I have not been reading is uh, The Sword Defiant. I'm actually buddy reading this with David over at David's Book Reviews, and we decided to take a break while I was on vacation. So I've only read the first few chapters of this one. However, I do have high hopes. Like my immediate like first impression is I think it's really cool because we have a guy who's basically like a retired hero. Him and his friends known as the Nine are like these this group of like epic warriors and they defeated this like super bad guy, Lord Bone they call him. And since then they've all kind of gone their separate ways and our main character, Alf, has ended up with Lord Bone's cursed sword. And his sword, like, actually speaks and has a mind of its own. So I'm really enjoying the banter between Alf and his sword. I think that's really kind of fun, and I don't think I've seen that in any other fantasy story so far. Not a talking sword in this way. So again, the story, I haven't gotten very far in the story yet. But the way that it's set up, I find very, very interesting. So I do have pretty high hopes for that one. I'm also reading The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon by Stephen King. And I am very thankful that this book is super short. It's like just over 200 pages. And honestly, the past couple King books I've read have been pretty long and pretty chunky. So I'm really excited that this one is short. Now, the first chapter or two of this one did make me a little bit nervous because it's a lot of setup. We're learning about a young girl, her name is Trish, and we're just learning about her and her life and her family and like where she comes from. And again, it's a lot of setup. If you've read Stephen King, you'll know he goes pretty in depth into his characters. So because that was up front, it kind of made me a little nervous because I was like, oh man, is this just going to be a book of like, you know, going on and on and on. But now the story has actually picked up and our main character, Trish, now finds herself lost in the woods. And the whole story is about her lost in the woods. And again, I haven't gotten very far yet, so don't know what it's going to happen. But I do know that King does tension building really well. So what I expect is that the tension is going to build and build and build with this poor girl lost in the woods, and I'm really looking forward to that. So I was nervous going in, but now it's starting to pick up, and now my hopes are starting to rise.
And the one book I do actually have with me tonight is uh, Threads That Bind by Kika Hatsapalu, whose name I'm probably mispronouncing, but this is a YA fantasy and it's basically like a three fates retelling. So our young character is one of three sisters because they're all the three fates and she is what's known as a cutter. So she's the one that can use her threads to cut other people's threads. And I'm going to stop myself because can you see on the camera like how this book reflects rainbow colors? I think that's so cool. I think that's so cool. I took the dust jacket off of this one because the dust jacket is like this weird clear iridescent plastic and I didn't want to mess it up. So I took it off so I could just enjoy the super cool hardcover. But anyway, all that's happened so far is that our main character, the, the cutter, the thread cutter, is investigating this series of murders. That's pretty much all that's happened. That's pretty much all I know about this one so far. Um, again, YA fantasy I have been struggling a bit with this year because a lot of them seem like the same. So I don't have, I'm trying to keep my expectations not too high in case this ends up being just kind of a generic YA fantasy. Um, but the fact that the cover is so cool is making me have like just a tad bit of extra help, just a tad bit. I don't really have anything else to share at this point other than um, I have a lot of reviews to catch up on, like two months worth. So I'm trying to like find a way to do that. I might have to double up on some. I'm also trying to pick out some books to do some more one minute reviews for because I feel like that's an easy way to like get one out. The one I'm working on right now is for Quest. This is the fourth book in the Septimus Heap series. And because I literally have to keep these videos to one minute, I actually have a little notebook where I've started uh, writing down, you know, what I want to say. And let me know if you find this interesting or not. But the way that I try to structure them is that I try to explain the book in the first 20 seconds and then use the remainder of the minute to kind of talk about my feelings, what I liked about it, what I didn't like, and kind of my, my final statement. And I'm kind of struggling with my final statement. Uh, here's what I have so far. I think this series is missing an overarching larger plot, but Quest is a great step in getting the series back to its silly adventure-filled core. I don't know why, I just, I don't love it for some reason. I have no idea by the time this vlog is finished whether I will have posted that or not, but if I haven't, let me know what you think about that last line. If I have already posted it, um, let me know if you think this behind the scenes stuff is interesting and maybe I'll do more of it in the future. So that's all for this check-in. I'm gonna sign off, go check on my laundry, and hopefully uh, go to bed soon. See you at the next check-in. And show everyone. You get your butt scratched. Butt scratch, butt scratch. Butt scratch, butt scratch. So I'm doing some used book shopping today and I found the Spanish version of the sixth Harry Potter book. I was really hoping it would be the first one because I have the first one in English, Chinese, British, and French, but it's the sixth, so it doesn't really fit in with my collection. So I'm trying to decide if I should buy it or not. Stay tuned to find out. Love a good $5 bookshelf, and I've been hearing so much about the Malazan series. I know a couple people mentioned it in my top 10 fantasy of all time, so I'm definitely going to have to pick this one up. Okay, so I was deciding whether I wanted to do like a whole book haul video, but I decided I'm so behind on reviews and other stuff that I'm going to skip that, and I'm just going to show you what I got really quick here. Hopefully that's a good idea. 
So right up front, no, I did not end up getting that Spanish Harry Potter book because A, I really want the first one in Spanish and B, I want to go somewhere and like physically bring it back from a Spanish speaking country. And yes, when I was in Costa Rica, I did look for it, could not find it. When I was in the Dominican Republic, there really wasn't anywhere that was selling books that I went because we just went to the resort and back. So again, failed on that, but I believe there will be a chance in the future to find it. What I did get though was Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. This is the first book in the Malazan series, which I know tons of people have read. They keep telling me about it. So if you've told me about it, I did finally get the first book. I don't know when I'm gonna read it, but maybe I'll put it on my list of hopefuls for 2024. Also on my list of hopefuls is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I've never read a Novik book. Again, this is another author that I've heard about a lot that I've always wanted to read. So I believe this is book one in this series. So really excited for that as well. I'm thinking maybe I should do like a video for 2024 reading hopefuls. If that's something you want to see, let me know. Next, I picked up The Fever Code by James Dashner. This is one of two prequels to the Maze Runner series. And believe it or not, this book had been on my wish list for forever, for years and years and years, and I never found it. But now that I do, now I have the entire Maze Runner series, including all the prequels. So I think because I abandoned the Septimus Heap and that was my middle grade series. I'm thinking that I'll pick up the Maze Runner and that'll be my middle grade or younger reader series through the end of the year. Because I don't think this is technically middle grade. It might be YA or it may be something in between. But I think these books are relatively short. So I'm going to try to get through the series before the end of this year. Next up, I do have a YA book, Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifuku. Again, I have a friend over on Bookstagram who has been raving about this one. I haven't heard too many people talking about it, but the one person that said she liked it, I do trust her opinion. So hopefully I can get to this one sooner rather than later. Another book super popular on Bookstagram is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. Again, never read anything by this author, but I know that this book in the series is super popular. Although I have recently heard some mixed reviews that maybe this book is overhyped, um, but I would like to read it and decide for myself. Next up, I have The Golem and the Djinn. I remember hearing about this book when it came out, but because it's a bit older now, like I don't hear many people talking about it. It came out in like 2013, 2014, which is so strange to think of that as a long time ago, but it is 10 years ago. So um, I never read it when it came out, but I always thought it sounded interesting. So hopefully going back and reading this one will be worth my time. Next up, I kind of have a random one, which is Portrait of a Thief by Grace DeLee. When I first heard about this book last year, I don't remember exactly what month it was, but when this book came out last year, I did mention it in one of my most anticipated books video because I thought it sounded like a really cool setup. So when I saw this one for sale, I had to grab it because I haven't seen it anywhere and I really wanna read it. Again, I haven't heard too many people talk about this one, but I thought it sounded pretty cool, so I'm gonna read it eventually if I ever get through my never ending TBR. And last but not least, the book that I was most excited to find is actually The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I'm sure everyone's heard of this book. I've never read it. I've actually never read any V.E. Schwab book. And wow, the sun just came out really brightly over here. Anywho, when this book came out, when was it? 20, 2020, 2021, it was everywhere. It was all over Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, whatever. Like this was the hit book, but I never read it. And I had serious FOMO for not reading it. But also I had never read any V.E. Schwab. So I was kind of like, do I want to jump on this hype train or just whatever? So I never did, but you know, better late than never. I have it now. I really want to read it. 
I just need to find a spot to fit it into my list because, again, that list is long. So those are all the books I got for my bargain book hunting. I went to both a library sale and a used bookstore. Now, funny story, walking into both of these places, there is one book in particular that I was actually looking for, and you might be surprised to know what that book is. There's a book that I was looking for that I want to read because there is a movie that's coming out in October that I'm very interested in. I'm interested in this movie because I've been a fan of the director's work in other movies. I'm a big fan of one of the lead stars, and I think the story is super important. So the library, I walked in, I asked for this book, if they had it, and they said that they did not. Then I went to the used bookstore, which sells actually both used and new books. And I asked them, hey, do you have a copy of this book? And they said, unfortunately, they had just sold the last copy like an hour ago before I got there. So I was like, no. So I came home. I was very happy with my, you know, book haul, but I was kind of bummed that I couldn't find the one book that I had gone out looking for. The next day, which is today, uh, my husband went out to do some shopping and he came back with the book that I was looking for, Killers of the Flower Moon. Yes, he knew I really wanted to read this one. So he went out to the store and got it for me, brand new, even though I was looking for a used copy because that's how sweet he is. But yeah, I don't really read nonfiction. I don't. It's just not a genre I gravitate towards. However, I am really excited for the movie that is based on this book. I did actually read The Lost City of Z by this author when it came out years ago, and I did enjoy that one. So I really want to educate myself about this situation before I see the movie. So I'm a big Leonardo DiCaprio fan, and yeah, I think the story is super important. It's not like a good story. It's not a fun story, but it's an important part of our history. And I wanted to read the book. So now I have it. So I am definitely going to be reading this one in September. Definitely. Before I sign off on this check-in, one more thing, and that is I actually got my second Owlcrate adult fantasy book, adult fantasy. So right now, Owlcrate has started doing adult fantasy, but it's only the book. So you pay and you get one special edition book every month. You don't get any of the other knickknacks and stuff that they typically send in like their YA boxes. So last month was the first month and I got Mortal Longings by um, Chloe Zhang. And this month, the book is... Masters of Death by Olive Blake. I have not even opened this yet, but I mean, look at that cover. It's super, super cool. Uh, let me go get a pair of scissors and I will open this quick so we can take a closer look. Okay, so first let's take a look at this cover. Hopefully the glare of the ring light isn't too bad, but it's black and it kind of has this brownish uh, embellishment on it. And then there's a skeleton right in the middle. Masters of Death, it's called. And it kind of has these silver stars around the edge. You can see how they shine in the light. And then on the back, there is a quote that says, everything's a game if you play it right. And it kind of looks, it's like it's in an old tiny mirror. And again, two skeletons on the bottom here. And yes, we've got black sprayed edges on this book. Ooh. And then I'm going to open it up and see what's on the inside. Oh, that's neat. So let me look at the hard cover first. The hard case. Oh my, I actually, oh, I love this hard case. Look at this. So again, it's black, but it has all these silver, silver things on them. So we'll call them icons. So there's apples and sides and cats and crowns and is that a juice box? It looks like a juice box, like all school stuff. There's an infinity sign. There's some leaves. There's knives. I think that looks like a, a timer maybe or, or watch, a watch. Okay. So on the front, it says Masters of Death, Olive Blake, all the silver stuff. And then on the back, there's another quote that says, the mortal thinks he has cheated death. Death thinks he has cheated the mortal. Both are wrong. Neither knows it yet. That's kind of an interesting quote, a cool quote. I love this. Like, honestly, 
I almost want to keep the dust jacket off because I, I don't know. I don't know. I just really love this. Okay. Inside cover, we have a bunch of what looks like old tiny type portraits of a bunch of different characters. And they're actually all in color. I'm trying to, there you go. So they're all in color. We've got, it looks like a couple boys, a couple girls, and they're all connected by this like silver vine. And I don't know what this is supposed to be. Maybe it's a an urn, a trophy. I don't know exactly what this thing is down here. But all the vines seem to be coming out of this urn type thing into these different pictures. So again, I assume that these are the, the characters of the book is what I assume. Same picture on the back cover as well. All right, let's take a look at the dust jacket because it is a reversible dust jacket. And oh, wow. Okay, so this is actually meant to like be reversed if you want it to. So let me just span really quick here. You can see there's quotes kind of on the far edges. And then in the middle, we have our characters. And it looks like, yeah, you could actually fold this over onto the book because here's where the spine would go. And then you would have the characters. So the quotes on here says, Oh, this is the same one that's on the back of the book. The mortal thinks he has cheated death, blah, 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 blah. And then on the other side, it says, I'm afraid I will cost you quite greatly, Fox. And I'm desperately sorry for it. Dun, dun, da, da. Okay, I have no idea what this book is about, but it looks pretty cool. So let me put this back together and then I can read the, uh, the blurb quick. This is supposed to be a really quick check-in and now I feel like it's turning out pretty long, but bear with me here. <clears throat> okay. Viola Merrick is a struggling a real estate agent and a vampire, but her biggest problem currently is that the house she needs to sell is haunted. The ghost haunting the house has been murdered and until he can solve the mystery of how he died, he refuses to move on. Fox Nomura is a medium. And though he is also most definitely a shameless fraud, he isn't entirely without his uses, seeing as he's actually the godson of death. Ooh, I like that. Godson of death. Interesting. When Viola seeks out Fox to help her with the ghost-infested mansion, he becomes instricably involved in a quest that neither he nor Vi expects or wants. But with the help of an unruly, sharp-voiced angel, a love-stricken reaper, and a few mindfulness-practicing creatures, Vine Fox soon discover that the difference between a mysterious lost love and an annoying dead body isn't nearly as distinct as they thought. Ooh, okay. That sounds like it could be interesting. Sounds like it could be interesting. I really want to read this one. I, I just need to have, I just need to find the time to do it, which is the constant struggle of my life. Okay, that is it for this check-in. I didn't even talk about my reading. Um, so I will just say <laughs> super, super quick, uh, The Sword Defiant, um, David and I are kind of just getting back into reading it again since I've been back from vacation. So it's been a little bit slow going. Don't really have an update there. Uh, the Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon is starting to get a lot better now that we're kind of at the part where we have a young girl. She's lost in the woods. She's all on her own. Um, I'm not so connected with the baseball aspect because I'm not a big baseball fan, but that's okay. I'm still enjoying that one. Um, Casile Servant by Jacqueline Carey. Um, really enjoying that one. There are a few things that I'm like, part of me misses about the original story, but I'm still enjoying this one as well. And then Threads That Bind, that one I'm starting to have mixed feelings about because I don't like American politics in fantasy stories. And that's kind of what's starting to happen, which is kind of a bummer. That's not, I read to get away from all that stuff. <laughs> So that's it for today's update. Um, I don't know when the next update will be, maybe towards the end of the month. Um, we'll see what happens. Bye for now. This weekend's project is getting out all the Halloween decorations so I can try to put together some stuff. Um, so this year, the new stuff is the Spooky Town um, these are Lee Max uh, things. Um, 
if anyone's familiar with Michael's, the craft store here in the U.S., uh, Lee Max puts out these um, spooky towns. And I just got some new ones this month, so I need to take them all out of the box and see what they look like and see how I can make all of this stuff look like an actual town. Okay, it's finally the end of the month, and as you can see, I have lost my tan from vacation. That's fine, that's fine. Anywho, looking back at this month, um, I really did, like, accomplish a lot. Not a lot of reading, but, you know, I had a great trip. I did some great uh, bargain book hunting, starting to get all of my Halloween stuff together, which I'm not done yet, but somewhere in this video when I'm editing, I'm going to stick in um, a little clip of how far I've gotten so far. Okay, so this is as far as I've gotten. I've taken the houses out of their packages and I've set them up in my little spooky village here. Unfortunately, I don't have all of the proper batteries and cords yet because they're all supposed to light up um so only two of them light up right now so there's still a little bit more work to do to finish setting it up um a little more um a little more pizzazz panache uh and all the lights so i will have to finish that next month but i'm happy with the way it's looking so far and coming along so you will have to check back next month for the uh finished result so even though I didn't finish all the books I started this month, I did finish four, which is actually pretty good, I think, considering I wasn't sure if I was going to finish any books this month. So the ones that I have not finished are The Sword Defiant. So this is the buddy read that I'm doing with David. We're not even like halfway through, but that's because I took a whole week off while I was on vacation and then David needed a few days off. So long story short here... This one is actually interesting so far. It's basically this world where our main character, Alf, Sir Alfric, is this old kind of battle-hardened warrior, and he and his friends um, defeated this evil guy like years and years and years ago. So there was nine of them. And since then, they've all kind of had their own lives, but now the guy that they defeated may or may not be coming back. And Alf is trying to figure out, like, who's helping this Dark Lord come back? Is It, it can't be one of his friends, can it? Um, so there's kind of like a mystery at the center of this, um, but it's grim, dark fantasy and it's pretty good so far. So this one will definitely, uh, carry over to September. I also got to the end of Threads That Bind. I'm not technically done with this one, but I'll finish this one tonight. So I'm including it here. I can't remember exactly what I said about this book previously, but... It was okay. It's it's an okay read. I mean, I don't think that anything in the last couple chapters is going to change my mind about this one. I think it's kind of like middle of the road. Okay, there are some things I liked about it. There's some things I didn't like about it. Um, but the book is so pretty. I just, I love the cover. Like, it's so cool. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say about this one. Um, I only have four books to rank this month when I do my wrap up. So this one could be at the bottom. Um, it could be. We'll see what happens. I did finish The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. This one I ended up enjoying. I didn't love it, love it. Like, I didn't love it like I love some other Stephen King books. But it's definitely one of the better ones that I've read recently. I appreciate the fact that it was short. That definitely helped me finish this month. And again, this will probably be let's say two or three in my rankings because there's only four. Real simple story, girl lost in the wood. I feel like I was waiting for something a little bit more like epic to happen that didn't. I don't really have anything to share about this one that I haven't said already. And I'll talk a bit more about it when I do my wrap up. So I don't want to say the same thing in both videos. So that's all I'm going to say for now. Uh, spoiler alert. 
I do think that this one is probably going to end up being my number one seal servant, Jacqueline Carey. I was doing a buddy read with Kirsten on this one. Um, I know she kind of <laughs> stopped reading it because she wasn't feeling it, but I did really enjoy this one. Do I love it as much as the original series as Kushiel's Dart? No, I don't. However, I just, I super love this world. I super love these characters. And I mean, I'm just like happy to be back here. You know, when you're like a big fan of something and then you're just, you're just happy to be back. You're just happy to be there. That's how this book makes me feel. So I would say if you are a fan of Kushiel's Dart, you'll probably feel the same way. If you're not, I don't think this book is going to change anyone's mind. So you should know going into it, it's for fans. If you're a fan, it's for you. If you're not a fan, it's probably not for you. And then the one other book I did finish was Sins of the Night, which again, <laughs> reminder, I lost this book in my trip earlier in the month. But I did finish this one. This one was really interesting. I'm going to have to think about how to talk about this one because this is the seventh book in this series but the good thing about this series is that each book is an individual story they're individual stories that just happen to take place in the same world and there are crossovers with the characters and the world building and stuff like that i like series like that i like series that have individual stories but then kind of have like an overarching um plot going on well I don't know if there is an overarching plot. It's more of just like, there's a couple characters that are always in the background of all the books. You probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but um, I'll talk about it more when I do my wrap up. Let's just say that I enjoyed this one overall. I liked it better than the previous book that I read in this series. I don't think that it's like, a great work of literature, but I think for what it is, i.e. supernatural, paranormal, uh, steamy romance, I think, you know, it was decent. There is one other book that I keep forgetting to mention that I have been reading throughout the month, and I'm not technically done with this one either, but that's Voices of the City by Gareth Howells. Uh, this is Gareth from Book Songs and Other Magic. This is the third book of poetry that I read this year. I started it in the beginning of August. I didn't read it when I was on vacation. And honestly, I did have a bit of a hard time picking it back up again. I just like, I wasn't in the mood for poetry. I just, I wasn't feeling it. But now that we're getting down towards the end of the month, I was like, I need to pick this one back up and um, get through it. And the good thing I will say about this book is for the most part, the poems are like, super short like th this is it so it's pretty easy to get through um i just have to like get myself motivated to do it as you can see from the tabs there are a number of poems that i've enjoyed in here i don't know if i uh, am connecting with this one as much as some of the other poetry that i've read so far this year um but Again, I will talk more about it when I do actually finish it and can put all of my thoughts and feelings together. So yeah, that brings us to the end of another reading blog. It's been a really exciting month and September should be another really exciting month. So hopefully I can put together um, a good vlog in September because there are some exciting things that are going to be coming up and happening. But I'm not going to talk about them here. I'm going to wait until I do my wrap up video. So come back for that one. Or if I've already posted, go watch it because I have some exciting things to share. But until then, uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please subscribe to my channel and I'll be talking to you soon. All right, everyone. Happy reading.